Hello everybody, it's uh, Miss Wiley here, and today I am going to be talking about how to factor trinomials again. Um, these problems specifically are different than the ones we have done before because the A value is not going to be 1. It does make the problem a little bit more challenging. So let's talk about the process that we took to factor the trinomials when a does equal 1. We'll do that here in a little warm-up. If you would like to attempt this problem on your own, this would be a good time to pause the video. Okay, so if you tried it, or if you didn't, this is the way you do the problem. So this is a trinomial in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. A trinomial in this form, whether a is equal to 1 or a is not equal to 1, will always factor into two binomials of the form, um, two binomials, sorry, let me write that here, and um, we had discussed that it'll look something like this, like, so let me just give you an example. This is not the answer to any problem. So it could look, you know, something similar to that. Okay. So when we would go to do a problem like this, we would write, you know, draw two parentheses and we would start filling in the terms. So two terms per parentheses. We knew that when a was one, it was always going to be the variable times itself. The reason why it's the variable by itself is because when you multiply two binomials, these first terms here, those are going to give you the value of the first term. So these two terms, when multiplied together, will always give you this term here. We would then go and look at negative 12, the last term, and we would think of ways to multiply to negative 12, or even just to 12, and kind of look at the numbers to see how um, they needed to be presented positive or negative, um, and where they needed to be placed. So different ways to multiply to 12, um, we know it's 6 and 2, 3 and three and 4, and 12 and 1, okay? Um, and it, when you're given these products, you want to look at them as, do any of these give me um, a sum or a difference of negative 4, right? So there's no way that you're going to get a difference of negative 4, with this one or with this one. So now I'm just looking at six and two, and to get a negative four, I would need the six to be negative. So then I would take those two numbers and I would put negative six in one of them and a positive two in the other. Remember the order of the parentheses does not matter because the order in which you multiply things doesn't matter. So for example, over here, x plus two times x minus three, is the same as if I had x minus 3 times x plus 2. Those are exactly the same um, product because they are exactly the same factors. Okay? So, um, so then this would be your answer to this problem here. Now the negative 6 and the 2, those last terms, they multiply together to give you the last term. So negative 6 and 2, they give you the last term. Remember, for this middle term, you always want to sort of check that you get this term. This term, you the way you get this term when you're multiplying is by multiplying these outside and inside terms of the binomials. Those tend to end up being like terms that we combine to get the middle term of the trinomial. So negative 6 times x is negative 6x. x times 2 is 2x. And you can do this check in your head or on paper like I'm doing here, and you can see that that check will definitely give me negative 4x. So this is definitely my answer. Okay, the reason why we want to check that middle is because if you accidentally put a plus here and a minus here, when you would go to check it, that would make this a positive 6x and this a negative 2x. And you would not get a negative 4x. So therefore, um, even though these two numbers give you the negative 12, they would not give you the negative 4x. So it is really important to check your answer, whether it's mentally or on paper, to make sure that your answer is correct in the factored form. 
Okay, so let's take this idea down to these problems here. These problems become a little bit different because in these problems, the A value does not equal 1. So we have to keep that in mind when we're doing these problems. These require a little bit more guess and check. Um, and the use of the patterns uh, that I had mentioned in another video, um, you can look at that, it's factoring trinomial patterns. That will definitely help with these type, types of problems. It allows you to make a more educated guess and become more efficient with your factoring. So when I go to do the first problem here, it is still in that form of ax squared plus bx plus c, so it will factor into two binomials. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw two binomials and I'm just going to start filling in the blanks here. Now, I had mentioned up above that these two terms, the first terms of the binomials should multiply together to give you your first term. My first term is 2x squared. The way that we multiply to 2x squared would be 2x times x. Okay. Another thing that I notice is that all of the signs are plus signs. So then these have to be plus signs. That's a pattern. Then the other thing that I mentioned is that the last term should multiply to give you, the last terms here should multiply to give you the last term of the trinomial. So that means that these two numbers that I'm going to put here and here, those need to multiply to be a positive 3. So the only way to multiply to positive 3 is 1 and 3. But it could also be 3 times 1. Let me show you the difference. Now, um, we know the first terms should multiply to give you the first term. The last term should multiply to give you the last term. What we're going to do with the middle term is we're going to check it to make sure we get it. We're not going to assume, and I'll show you how we do that. So 2x times x takes care of this term. Now, the, these two terms need to give me the 3. So it's either going to be a 1 and a 3, or it's going to be a 3 and a 1, right? Um, though the order of multiplication doesn't matter, I'm going to show you how it does matter with these problems here. Okay, so if I do a 1 and a 3, I'm like, oh, 2x and x is 2x squared. 1 and 3 is 3. I must be right. Well, maybe not. This is where the check comes in. For the check, you need to check that those like terms that you would get when foiling or multiplying binomials, however you do that, is going to give you 5x. So I've already multiplied these terms together. I've also already multiplied these terms together to give me this term and this term. So now I'm going to check here. Um, the way you get this x term is from this inside, that's 1x, and this outside, that's 6x. Do you see when you add those together, it gives you 7x? That's not what we want. We want that middle term to be 5x. So we're going to try something else. Some people just like to erase. Some people like to say, oh, that's not right. I'm going to cross it out and try something else. I usually just erase and move things around and recheck. But for the purpose of the notes, I'm going to leave that there so I don't guess the same thing twice. Okay, so here I am, I have the 2x and x, that's 2x squared, I know that's right. I know since they're all plus signs, these have to be plus signs. Um, sometimes you might not know where your signs go or what they're supposed to be, but when they're all plus signs in the trinomial, you know they're going to be plus signs in the binomials. It's just a pattern that's nice to know. Now, putting the 1 in the same binomial as the term 2x didn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 3 with that term, and I'm going to put the 1 here. Checking this, I have 2x times x gives me 2x squared, 3 times 1 gives me 3. Checking to make sure I get 5x, again, this check can be done in your head or it can be done on paper. The outside and the inside will allow you to check. That's 3x, that's 2x, combined together, I would get 5x. So now I know that this is my final answer. 
This becomes more challenging as you have positive and negative signs. Okay, um, let's go to another problem here. So in this problem here, 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Again, I know it's going to factor into two binomials. That's going to be 3x, and that's going to be x. Now, another pattern that's nice to know is if the middle term is minus and the last term is plus, you know that both of the terms are going to be, um, both of the signs in the binomials is going to be a minus sign. So uh, that's something that I already know. This is why those patterns are nice to be able to recognize. Okay, now I know that the first term, first terms have to multiply to give me this first term. These last terms have to multiply to give me this last term. The last term is positive two. So negative one times negative two maybe would be positive two. So I already have my negative signs there. If you don't have them there, you can put them there later. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put the two here and the one here. Now you see it's negative two times negative one. That will give me positive two. But remember, you need to check this middle term. The way you check the middle term is by the outside and the inside. So negative two x, negative three x, uh-oh, that's not what I wanted. I don't want negative five x, I want negative seven x. So I'm gonna do a little switcheroo here. I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna erase. So I want to switch these two numbers around, see if that works. I'm going to put the 1 here and the 2 here instead. So I'm going to go ahead and now check it. Again, this check can be done mentally or it can be done on paper. I recommend at first that you check it on paper. So it's good to have um, a eraser using pencil. If you have a dry erase board, that works really well for these problems. Um, so then you can see by checking the inside and the outside, I definitely get that negative 7x that I'm looking for. So I got the 3x squared from the 3x times x, I got the positive 2 from the negative 1 and the negative 2, and then I got the negative 7x from the inside and the outside terms. So there is your final answer. Okay, let's look at another example. So, because um, each problem is a little bit different. Let's look at this example here. Um, if you wanna see these other three examples completed, I will be presenting those in a second video. So for this example here, I can see that it's in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So I know it's gonna factor into two binomials. And I can see that my first term is 5x squared. So the way that I multiply to 5x squared would be 5x and x. Um, and so the, remember, the first term should give you that first term. The last term here needs to be a negative 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, oh, I'm going to do um, negative 2 and positive 1 that's how you would get to negative two. So I'm good, I got five x times x is five x squared, negative two times one is negative two. But remember, you've gotta check that you get that middle term. And how do we do that? Yes, we check the outside and the inside either mentally or on the page, okay? So here we have five x times one is positive five x, negative two times x is negative two x. Do you see that those terms would not give you negative nine x? So your answer is not quite correct. So let's try something else. So this is where um, an eraser comes in handy. So I'm gonna switch these around. I'm going to do um, negative one and positive two. It still is negative one times two to give me negative two and five x times x is five x squared. I still have those two products ready and set to go. I just need to check the middle one. And again, check it mentally if you can. Um, 5x and 2 is 10x, negative 1 and x is negative 1x. You can see that gives me positive 9x. I am so close. But imagine if this were a positive 1x and this was a negative 10, wouldn't that give you negative 9x? Absolutely. So I know that all I need to do is change the signs. 
and that's going to give me negative 9x. 5x times x is 5x squared, positive 1 and negative 2 is negative 2. This middle term comes from the outside and the inside, and that would give me negative 9x, so I know that this is the answer. Now what I want you to notice in all of these examples that I've done so far, that the first and last terms were prime numbers. What prime numbers give us are less ways to factor those numbers out. The problems become more challenging as the first and last term become numbers that are not prime numbers, like 6, for example, or 4, or 12. There's lots of ways to multiply to 12. So what that does is it gives you more options, which makes you have to maybe guess a little bit more until you've practiced this. So this is one way to factor these when a does not equal 1. So you can give this a try. And remember, this works really well when the first and last terms are prime numbers. I will be presenting other ways to factor these types of trinomials um, that some people like, and you can make your choice of which way works best for you. Sometimes I go back and forth between which method I use, but this guess and check method seems to work the best for me. So everybody works a little bit differently. So if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to the channel so that you can see the other videos of the other methods of how to factor a trinomial when a does not equal 1. I will also be posting another video of how I factored these last three problems. Good luck with your practice.